again folks, Ariel here with the fourth installment on the how to downsize your stuff and make your life better series. Um, so we've gone over items in your kitchen, items in your clothing a wardrobe, um, the furnishings and furniture in your house and your bed uh, bedroom especially. And now we just want to talk about the probably what is the biggest one because there's just so many of them and I'm some of these things I'm not going to go into great detail because I actually already have videos on what all I use for cleaning my house, what all I use for tooth care, what all I use for skin care. All of those have their own separate videos that you can find just go to the channel homepage and and then the little search thing with the little magnifying glass put in whichever topic you're looking for and, and it'll pull it up. Um, but along with all the other things we've mentioned, and this is the fourth one in the series, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch the others. Um, one of the things that, that is probably maybe the greatest contributor to all of the um, toxic air and such that tends to be in our house is all the chemical products of all kinds that we are now using in most um, modern households for all kinds of things, um, for cooking, for cleaning, for deodorizing, for um, smelling good, for makeup, for body care, for laundry, for all of these things. And most of them are just, um, just simply not necessary. Uh, in general, my rule of thumb is if I can't eat it, it's not going to go on my skin or on anything else I touch or probably in my house. Obviously, a few exceptions. I can't eat wood. I'm going to have wood in my house. But as far as, as products for different things, that's kind of my rule of thumb. And the awesome part about this is it makes your life so much simpler. It's going to reduce so much stuff. It's going to save you so much money because this is probably the biggest area where that is um, true. And a lot of people are like, oh, I can't buy all the eco-friendly, green, non-toxic products because they're really expensive. That's probably true, but most of them you don't actually need at all. What I use for most things, I use a ton of coconut oil. I use it for cooking, I use it on my skin, I use it in my hair, I use it on my teeth. Um, don't use it much for cleaning because it's an oil. Um, white vinegar. I use this for cleaning windows. I use it in a spray bottle with some water for cleaning or disinfecting anything else. Spritzing down a floor after Burley ate on it. He just ate his meal and now he's napping in front of the wood stove at my feet. Um, uh, you can soak veggies in it to help leach um, a little bit of, especially if you don't have access to good um, vegetables that you grew or you know how they were grown, leach some of the um, some of the, the pesticides and herbicides and such that may be soaked into the vegetables out. I use, I use, I go through gallons of this stuff. Um, but it's, it's usually inexpensive, often 50, 69 cents for a, a bottle. Um, you can disinfect a lot of things, you can whiten your teeth, you could, you could even bleach your hair, it's a little dry, um, with hydrogen peroxide. Again, very, very inexpensive um, for uh, a lot of moisturizing, hair, skin, you know, whatever I use aloe. Um, you can also drink it. A lot of how your hair and skin looks comes from what is going on inside your guts and so on and what you are taking in. Not just what you are putting on the outside, but like I talked about with clothing, your skin is a very big organ and things you put on the outside do soak in to your skin very quickly. My hands are actually a bit dry from dishwashing and the dry air. It's been frigid here um, right now. And aloe is very, very moisturizing. Um, for so yeah, for cleaning, I pretty much use hot water, soap, um, there's a good Dr. Bronner's soap, there's a few other non-toxic ones. You don't need that much soap. It doesn't need to make bubbles. It doesn't need to have all kinds of scents. That, that's one of the things that really drives me crazy. People pick up something, whatever, a freshly laundered sheet or something, but oh, it smells so clean. And to me it's just cr crazy because clean doesn't smell like anything. It smells like nothing. When it's clean it doesn't smell. Those smells that you're smelling are actually all kinds of poisonous chemicals off-gassing that you've got into your head are the smell of clean because that's what's been sold to you by the ads by the people who want you to buy their stuff. That's not smell like clean. That smells like, and to me being more sensitive that I, I really can't use most laundry detergents and stuff. It makes my, my skin break out if I wear clothing that's been laundered in that stuff. So I'm, I'm very aware of this. But to me that just seems so insane 
thing because to me it so clearly smells like oh my goodness that's that's toxic and other people are like oh it smells so clean um for laundry i mainly use soap nuts these things look like little acorns if you can see them through the bag there kind of um these are are awesome they don't really make much so suds they get the dirt out of your clothes i am going to do a whole video on laundry i know lots of people have asked me i do have a couple blog posts on it right now i just have not gotten to doing a video i don't do laundry that often because um back to the clothing thing when you have natural fibers they don't they don't get that dirty or smell that quickly and i've if i'm wearing a shirt and jeans for doing something really dirty out in the woods. I'm often doing the same thing the next day so I simply hang it up and put the same clothes on to finish the project because there's no real need to wash it in between. So I just don't do laundry that often. Um, so yeah for laundry it's simple to use very non-toxic things. If you've got a little bit of an odor like if you're getting some armpit odor on a, a shirt or something I do have a spray bottle. This is my all-purpose cleaning for everything. This is like half vinegar, half water, um, and I use this for spritzing down, disinfecting all kinds of things, and spraying the inside of a shirt. If it gets a little stinky, that vinegar will kill those bacteria causing that smell. This is just white vinegar I just put in a spray bottle so it's easier to use. Um, so yeah, laundry is super simple and inexpensive. I mean, that's, that's the great thing about all these things. They're almost all way, way cheaper than the poisonous stuff. So why spend more and be poisoned more and have to deal with more stuff? Vinegar gets used for all kinds of things. Vinegar in a spray bottle gets used when I want to apply it in a more spray kind of way. Um, for makeup and such, um, I'm not the best person to talk about that, but I, because I just don't use much of it, um, I do like a little mascara every now and then because I'm a little bit vain and sensitive about the fact that my eyelashes are so light it doesn't look like I have any. Um, and I don't want them to look like fake. I just wanted them to look like I had some. So this is just a natural brown mascara. Um, this is from Honey Bee Gardens. I'll link that down below. It's probably the, the um, most natural one I've found that doesn't, a lot of makeup and stuff has like formaldehyde and all kinds of just really awful stuff. Again, look this stuff up yourself, guys. It's not that hard to find when you, when you actually want to learn about it and read about it. So that's what I use when I do use, um, makeup and there are quite a few people out there like crunchybetty.com, wellnessmama.com. There's a lot of other women who do more girly makeup-y stuff than I do. If you want to do some more natural things and, and other things um, to give you all kinds of ideas and tips about that. But the sad thing to me is that a lot of us women especially, and men are getting plenty of chemical exposure as well, but women are putting more of it on our skin where it soaks directly into our bodies and um, I think the average is that like the average American woman is exposing herself to something like, I don't know if it's 340, it's some crazy big number, I'm not going to say the number because I don't know what it is, some crazy big number of hundreds of toxic chemicals before she even walks out the house most mornings. Um, and that really does have an effect on our, on our health. And it's expensive. I mean, you ladies have to know if you if you buy all this stuff, it costs a fortune. Again, most of having healthy skin, not that mine's perfect, but it's so much better than it ever was even when I was a baby. Um, it, it comes from figuring out your digestion and your health and your nutrition and all of that stuff, not just what you slather on top of it. Um, and if you want to smell good, everything that says fragrance, that covers... Um, you would think that would be a thing and I think when it's a, you pick up a bottle and it says oh smells like roses and at the bottom of the ingredient list it says fragrance I think in a lot of our heads that is um, oh obviously they squished up some rose petals and put it in there it smells like roses it's got a fragrance that's that's very rarely what is going on um, fragrance is a, a designation that allows the chemi uh, company to not list the chemicals that are in there sometimes that one word covers dozens or hundreds of things that are in there, a lot of which are poisonous. Um, I know a lot of you followers are in Europe. I think you guys have some number of thousands of chemicals banned um, that are um, still allowed to be put in things that people here in the U.S. are using. So uh, 
people in this country, in the States, are getting a lot more of those toxic things in all of their products without knowing what it is. If you want to know, I mean, this is a, this is a huge subject, subject and something I get really passionate about because it is so um, very much affected my personal life. But if you want to learn more about that, there's good. If you've got Netflix, I think there's a good documentary on there called Stink, maybe is the title. I'll see if I can find a, a link down below. Um, and, and there's quite a few, you know, easy ways to learn about this stuff and what it's actually doing to our bodies. But anything that says fragrance, I would avoid. Candles, air fresheners, um, body sprays, most uh, perfumes, anything that's scented hand lotion, scented dish soap, scented whatever. If it says fragrance, I treat the entire body like it is. Uh, the, if it says fragrance on it, I treat the entire bottle like the thing is poisonous. Um, and if, if they if they're concerned about enough about not wanting to tell me what they actually put in it, because again, that one word covers a whole list of chemicals, I just don't want to take the risk. That's my personal choice. I'd rather use something I know what it is. If I want to s smell something, I put some in the like pot water uh, uh, pot that's always just heating on the top of the wood stove to add some humidity back to my air or even on my own skin or something. You can use an essential oil like jasmine or rose or something. These things smell awesome. You need like one teeny weeny little drop if you're going to use it as a perfume um, or to make a house smell good. And these things are, are actually not poisonous for you, which is amazing. Um, they are a little expensive, but a bottle like this will last you forever. I, don't, I think I've had a bottle of jasmine for... I don't know, six, seven years, and it's mostly full still. Um, anyway, so this is like, this is what I use for all of my cleaning, personal care, laundry, all of that stuff. And if you learn to use these more natural things, like I said, again, there, I just, I don't see a downside. You have less stuff. It takes up less space. If you have a dog that gets into it and drinks the vinegar, which in my experience most dogs don't love the taste of vinegar, it's not going to kill them. If your child drinks the vinegar, it's not going to kill them. Um, it's it's cheaper, it's healthier, there's less stuff, there's just, uh, and to me it is uh, absolutely only upsides. And, and again, it, it just, I kind of had in my head, I guess because some of my closest friends are very aware of these things, um, that, oh, everyone knows this stuff. And then, like I mentioned a couple of videos ago, in the last little bit, I've spent a lot of time in other people's houses, and I look at what the, the laundry detergent they have sitting beside their washing machine, the, uh, the scented soap, um, hand soap and dish soap beside their sink, the whole stack of bottles in their bathrooms and so on. And, and I'm, um, if that's how you would like to live, that's fine. I'm, I think everyone should be able to do what they want, but I just, I think most people are actually not aware that this stuff is really, really, really actually bad for us. And it's both simpler and less expensive to just not use it. I don't even walk that, you know, if you go to a grocery store and there's the different aisles that have different things, the like soap, um, laundry, cleaning aisle. I try to not even walk near it, like much less down that aisle because I, it makes it really hard for me to breathe. Um, and these things, that's the other thing. When, you know, when you walk down that aisle, you can smell clean or whatever you want to call it. To me, it's just poison. Um, but that's even in, you know, the sealed bottle. This is just peroxide. But for example, the sealed bottle usually has, you know, a little seal you got to take off before it's even open. And you're, enough of that stuff is coming through the plastic bottle that you're smelling it just walking around. That's ha continuing to happen just on a, at a lower level, the whole time it's under your sink or in your cupboard or in your broom closet or wherever you keep such things that is constantly, even when you're not using it, which is also a problem, it's constantly evaporating into into the air and adding to just the, the soup of toxic stuff your body has to constantly process. And yes, our bodies are designed to be able to deal with some junk coming in, filter it out and, and make it go away again. But there is a limit. I mean, you can probably think about this if you ever used a strainer to cook something, you know, you can pour things in there. There's lots of holes, lots of things will, you know, the liquid will st still keep coming through. But at some point when you pack too much junk in here, it, it just quits and, and you're 
liquid just starts backing up and, and flowing back over the top instead of going through because it does have a limit to what it can handle. And our bodies are a little bit like that. And since there are a lot of things out there in the world I can't control, I can't control what some power plant is doing usually, I can't control what's in the grocery store, I can't control what's... I do actually avoid a lot of public places just because of the odors. I can't control what's in my friend's carpet when I go to their house, that kind of thing. What I do want to control is what is in my house because that is where I spend most of my time and where I sleep and where I eat mostly and all of that stuff. So I want to keep my place as my like safe little nest, which is the name of my house. Um, but yeah, anyway, I just get really worked up about this stuff. And if you think all of this sounds like crazy crackpot nonsense, that is fine. I highly encourage you to go look up why you think it is crazy crackpot nonsense, because I think we are all better off if we know more about this stuff. Um, and I don't know that I've ever encountered somebody who started learning more about this and concluded that all of these things were actually totally safe and harmless and they should use more of them instead of less, but if that's the conclusion you come to, that's fine. I just, what saddens me is so many people spend a lot of their life never having heard anything about this and so they're dealing with whatever kind of chronic health issue, um, inflammation, uh, uh, congestion, that's the word I'm looking for, um, infertility, it, you know, all kinds of things are affected by all these chemicals we just bombard our bodies with. And, and so many people have, you know, nobody's ever told them that. And so they've never thought about that. So what I want to do is just tell you that. I can speak from my personal experience that for sure changing these things make it makes a difference in my life. I very firmly believe it would make a difference in your life as well. If you don't, that is fine, but I want to at least um, put the idea out there in case you have never thought about it. Thanks for watching folks! If you're interested in more info on my off-grid tiny house life, check out some of my other videos here. And if you like what you're seeing, Click the little picture of my house to subscribe and then hit the little bell so YouTube actually notifies you every time there's a new video available. See y'all next time.